In the dead of night, residents of Tel Aviv were jolted awake by a deafening explosion that shattered their calm. The blast, the result of a drone attack, left one person dead and 10 others injured. The eerie sound, described by one resident as a different league, really loud, was a harrowing reminder of the ever-present threat that now looms over the city. Limor Sajiv, whose windows were blown out by the force of the explosion, recounted the fear that gripped her and her neighbors. We are very thankful that we weren't physically hurt, but it was really, really scary, she said, reflecting the anxiety that now blankets the city. Well, we woke up at 3 a.m. with a huge noise of, of a blast. We, we had no idea what it was. I mean, we heard missiles before, we heard things. This was a different league. It was really, really loud. Um, we saw some orange and red lights, um, and we had a very you know, unpleasant smell of, um, it's like rubber on fire. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't very nice. Um, we immediately phoned our kids to see whether they're okay, they're around uh, Tel Aviv. Um, and it took us about a few minutes to realize that it's really outside our door. Israeli officials have cited a human error for the failure to intercept the drone, a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities that exist even within advanced military systems. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, an Israeli military spokesperson, confirmed that the drone was detected, but due to an oversight, it was not intercepted. The mistake has triggered an urgent investigation to prevent future occurrences and to better understand how such a critical error happened. In this event, we are talking about an error. There was a detection. We are investigating all the chain, but it is known there was no interception. The attack, carried out by an Iranian-made drone launched by Yemen's Houthi rebels, marked a troubling escalation in the ongoing Middle East conflict. For the first time, the Houthis have executed a lethal strike on Israeli soil. This drone, a Samad 3 upgraded for long-range travel, breached what was considered an impenetrable defense, proving to be a grim milestone in the ongoing conflict between Israel and its adversaries. Following the findings at the scene and through the military systems, we found that it is an unmanned aircraft, model Samad 3 UAV. In our estimation, it came from Yemen to Tel Aviv. Soma 3 UAV is an Iranian-made military equipment that had been upgraded to enable it to fly long-range. Iran is supporting, funding, and arming its proxies from Gaza, the West Bank, Lebanon, Syria to Yemen. The drone struck near the U.S. Embassy, sending shrapnel cascading through the streets and leaving a trail of destruction. The debris spread over a wide area, turning a peaceful morning into a scene of chaos and despair. Authorities are grappling with the implications of this attack as it underscores significant lapses in defense systems and response protocols. Israeli officials have cited a human error for the failure to intercept the drone, a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities that exist even within advanced military systems. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, an Israeli military spokesperson, confirmed that the drone was detected, but due to an oversight, it was not intercepted. The mistake has triggered an urgent investigation to prevent future occurrences and to better understand how such a critical error happened. In this event, we are talking about an error. There was a detection. We are investigating all the chain, but it is known there was no interception. The Houthis, in a statement on social media, took responsibility for the attack, framing it as a response to the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. They claimed that their drones are capable of bypassing Israeli defenses, though Israeli officials have cast doubt on this assertion. The Yemeni armed forces, with the help of God, carried out a special military operation 
targeting one of the important objectives in the occupied Yaffa area, known in Israel as Tel Aviv. The operation was executed with a new drone named Yaffa, capable of bypassing the enemy's interception systems and undetectable by radars. The operation successfully achieved its objectives. The Yemeni armed forces declared the occupied Yaffa area an unsafe zone, and it will be a primary target for our weapons. We will focus on targeting the Zionist enemy's internal front and reaching deep into their territory. For the residents of Tel Aviv, this attack represents a brutal interruption of their daily lives and a somber reminder of the persistent and escalating violence in the region. We are in a multi-front war. We work on all fronts and defend the country every day. Some of these fronts are close and others are far away. We work against all threats. We are holding an investigation today and in the coming days to understand exactly from where the threat was fired and what are the needed responses to defend the country and what are the attacking responses against who is threatening the state of Israel. Like a tinderbox in a dry forest, the Middle East stands on the brink of a wider conflagration as Israel continues its military operations in the Gaza Strip and considers a new offensive in southern Lebanon. The potential for a larger conflict involving multiple battlefronts is causing increasing concern across the region. The conflict with the Palestinian Hamas movement, which erupted with an unprecedented surprise attack last October, has led to Israel being struck from several directions. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu described a seven-front war involving Iran and an informal coalition known as the Axis of Resistance. In time of war, I do not intend to refer to commissions of inquiry. I have already said that this is not the time for that, but I will tell you one thing. The decisions I made regarding the cruise ships and submarines were and remain vital to securing Israel's security against Iran's axis of evil, some of which have already proved useful in the current war. The ships we bought intercepted suicide drone attacks on the state of Israel in the current war. They saved many lives. What would have happened if I had not made the decision to bring these ships? In response to Netanyahu's remarks, Iran's mission to the United Nations issued a stark warning against any large-scale Israeli aggression in Lebanon, home to the powerful Hezbollah movement. The Iranian statement cautioned that such actions would lead to an obliterating war and potentially involve all resistance fronts. The Israeli military has countered by stating it is prepared for various security scenarios to protect the nation. With no ceasefire in sight in Gaza or along the Israel-Lebanon border, here's a detailed overview of the seven fronts where Israel has encountered conflict and where tensions could further escalate. Since Hamas took control of Gaza in 2007, two years after the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, disengaged from the territory, Israel and the militant group have engaged in several conflicts. The recent attack by Hamas on October 7th, 2023, has triggered the longest and deadliest conflict to date in the densely populated coastal enclave. Israeli officials have claimed significant gains in the conflict, but acknowledge that achieving their goals, defeating Hamas as a functioning military and political entity, ensuring Gaza does not pose a future threat, and returning hostages could take months. Despite the intense IDF offensive, Hamas continues to conduct near-daily operations, often in coordination with smaller factions. The Fatah-led Palestinian National Authority, PA, retains nominal control over parts of the West Bank. But President Mahmoud Abbas faces a major legitimacy crisis. Popular resentment over the lack of elections, accusations of corruption, and growing Israeli military and settler activity have eroded the PA's authority. 
The IDF regularly conducts raids against suspected militia strongholds, such as the Jenin refugee camp and Hamas, along with other factions, including independent groups, has expanded its influence in the West Bank, including the disputed holy city of Jerusalem. Our forces are operating in Rafah, in Shijaya, everywhere in the Gaza Strip. Every day they eliminate dozens of terrorists. It is a difficult struggle that is waged above ground, sometimes in face-to-face -face battles, and it is also waged underground. Weapons smuggling into Gaza has long been a concern for Israel, but the current war has drawn attention to the vast number of arms spread throughout the West Bank. While Israel exerts effective control over much of the territory, a concerted offensive by groups here could divert Israeli security resources from other fronts. I returned yesterday from a tour of the Gaza division. I saw great achievements of fighting that is being carried out in Rafah. We are nearing to the end of the elimination phase of Hamas's terrorist army. There will be a continuation of hitting its remnants. Israel has already doubled down on resources allocated to the Northern Front due to intensifying clashes with Hezbollah. The militant group recently declared it is ready for anything. Israel has invaded Lebanon three times and fought two major wars involving Hezbollah. But a new all-out conflict could be the most devastating yet for both sides. Israeli officials estimate that Hezbollah has accumulated an arsenal of around 200,000 rockets, along with mortars, drones, surface-to-air missiles, anti-tank missiles, and precision-guided munitions. Hezbollah is widely considered more powerful than Hamas, and a battle with the group could see major Israeli cities such as Tel Aviv and Haifa targeted with barrages of weaponry overwhelming Israeli defense systems like the Iron Dome. Additionally, Israeli troops would face constant fire along both sides of the border. If Israel ignites the war in Lebanon, it will depend on the level of this war. No one knows the repercussions of igniting the war locally, regionally, or even internationally. We cannot delve into the possibilities of war now, because they are numerous and varied. However, if it does break out, all serious and major possibilities are certainly conceivable on a regional level. In the Golan Heights, an area occupied and annexed by Israel without international recognition, Iran has expanded its influence by supporting President Bashar al-Assad in the Syrian civil war. This support includes backing Hezbollah and various other militias. The IDF has conducted hundreds of airstrikes against suspected Iran-linked targets in Syria. Since the outbreak of the war in Gaza, a coalition of Iran-linked groups known as the Imam Hossein Division has operated in both Syria and Lebanon. Occasional launches against Israel have occurred, but an IDF airstrike that killed Iranian military officials in Damascus sparked the first ever direct exchange of attacks between Iran and Israel, exacerbating fears of a broader conflict between the two longtime rivals. Iraqi militias active in Syria have also become increasingly involved since the beginning of the Israel-Hamas war. While Iraq does not directly border Israel, it has been the source of frequent drone and missile attacks claimed by a coalition of factions known as the Islamic Resistance in Iraq. This coalition includes prominent groups such as the Nujaba Movement, Kataib Hezbollah, and Ashab al kaf These groups have warned that their attacks, which had paused following U.S. strikes in response to the deaths of three U.S. soldiers at the Jordan-Syria border, could resume and expand if U.S. forces do not withdraw from Iraq. The ongoing strikes against Israel add another layer of complexity to the conflict. Houthi movement, also known as Ansar Allah, 
has become one of the most disruptive factions in the axis of resistance. Since taking control of the capital, Sana'a, in 2015, the group has launched missiles and drones against Israel and commercial vessels accused of violating a blockade on trade with Israel. The Houthis have faced repeated strikes from the US and the UK due to their maritime offensives, but they have fortified their military infrastructure with underground complexes and vowed to enter into direct war with Israel and the US if necessary. While Iran has stated it does not seek a regional war, its rhetoric has sharpened and it openly supports axis of resistance factions. Iran possesses the largest and most advanced missile arsenal in the Middle East. Iran, the number one global sponsor of terror, has exposed its true face as the de destabilizer of the region and the world. And now, right now, is when the world must stop ignoring Iran's crimes and take action. As Iran's mask has fallen, the world's com complacency must also fall. The mask comes off and the gloves must come on. Madam President, Excellencies, Iran has no intention of engaging in conflict with the U.S. in the region. We demonstrated our commitment to peace by exercising our restraint about involving the U.S. Army in intercepting Iranian drones and missiles bound for military target in the occupied Palestinian territories. This underscores our dedication to de-escalating tension and avoiding the expansion of conflict. However, if the U.S. initiate military operation against Iran, its citizen or its security and interest, Iran will use its inherent right to respond proportionately. An open conflict with Israel could test the resilience of Israel, nearby Arab states, and the US-Iran's language has become more aggressive, especially as the possibility of an Israel-Hezbollah war looms larger. The axis of resistance includes Shiite fighters from across the Middle East and beyond, including Afghan and Pakistani units. Both the Taliban-led Afghanistan and neighboring Pakistan have issued warnings against Israel over its offensive in Gaza, but have shown no willingness to become directly involved in the conflict. These countries have their own complex histories with Iran and its allies. Additionally, the coalition has sought to include contingents from other countries, such as Jordan and Bahrain, both close US partners that have cracked down on domestic activity linked to Iran. Azerbaijan, a close Israeli partner that also borders Iran, has also contended with pro-Iran elements at home. Complicating the regional landscape further is the growing partnership between Iran and Russia. Russia has used Iranian drones in its ongoing war in Ukraine and has traditionally balanced its relationships with Iran and Israel. However, Moscow has become an increasingly vocal critic of Israel's campaign in Gaza and its airstrikes in Syria, where Russia maintains troops and air defense systems. As threats escalate and violence continues, the region remains on edge, with the potential for a wider conflict looming large. The situation demands careful navigation to avoid turning the tinderbox into a full-blown inferno.